The Tale of Despero. Chapter 7. A Mouse in Love. And what was our own favorite member of the mouse community doing while the sound of the mouse council drum echoed through the walls of the castle? Reader, I must report that Furlough had not seen the worst of it. Despero sat with the princess and the king and listened to song after song. At one point, gently, oh so gently, the pea picked up the mouse in her hand. She cupped him in her palm and scratched his oversized ears. You have lovely ears, said P to him. They are the, like small pieces of velvet. Despero thought that he might faint with the pleasure of someone referring to his ears as small and lovely. He laid his tail against the pea's wrist to steady himself, and he felt the princess's pulse, the pounding of her heart, and his own heart immediately took up the rhythm of hers. Papa, said the pea, when the music was over, I am going to keep this mouse. We are going to be great friends. The king looked at Despero, cupped in his daughter's hand. He narrowed his eyes. A mouse? he muttered. A rodent? What? said the pea. Oh, put it down, the king commanded. No, said the pea, who was a person not at all used to being told what to do. I mean, why would I? Why should I? Because I told you to. But why? protested the pea. Because it's a mouse. I know. I'm the one who told you he was a mouse. I wasn't thinking, said the king. Thinking of what? Your mother, the queen. My mother, said the pea sadly. Mice are rodents, said the king. He adjusted his crown. They are related to rats. You know how we feel about rats. You know of your own dark history with rats. The pea shuddered. But Papa, she said, he is not a rat. He's a mouse. There's a difference. Royalty, the king said, has many responsibilities. And one of them is not becoming involved personally with even the distant relatives of one's enemies. Put him down, P. The princess put Despero down. Good girl, said the king. Then he looked at Despero. Scat, he said. Despero, however, did not scat. He sat and stared up at the princess. The king stamped his foot. Scat, he shouted. Papa, said the princess, please don't be mean to him. And she began to weep. <laughs> Despero, seeing her tears, broke the last of the great ancient rules of mice. He spoke to a human. Please, said Despero, don't cry. He held out his handkerchief to the princess. The pea sniffed and leaned down close to him. Do not speak to her, thundered the king. Despero dropped his handkerchief. He backed away from the king. Rodents, do not speak to princesses. We will not have this becoming a topsy-turvy, wrong-headed world. There are rules. Scat, get lost before my common sense returns and I have you killed. The king stamped his foot again. Despero found it alarming to have such a big foot brought down with so much force and anger so close to his own small head. He ran toward the hole in the wall, but he turned before he entered it. He turned and shouted to the princess, My name is Despero. Despero, she said. I honor you, shouted Despero. I honor you was what the knight had said to the fair maiden in the story that Despero read every day in the book in the library. Despero had muttered the phrase often to himself, but he had never before this evening had occasion to use it when speaking to someone else. Get out of here, shouted the king, stamping his foot harder, and then harder still so it seemed as if the whole castle, the very world, were shaking. Rodents know nothing of honor. Despero ran into the hole, and from there he looked out at the princess. She had picked up his handkerchief, and she was looking at him, right directly into his soul. Despero, she said. He saw his name on her lips. I honor you whispered Despero. I honor you. He put his paw over his heart. 
He bowed so low that his whiskers touched the floor. He was, alas, a mouse deeply in love.